Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about refactors that have no point but are still useful. So let's get into it. So the question in question was basically a follow up on my previous video about like refactoring legacy code and things like that and when to determine whether or not you're refactoring for a good reason or if you're refactoring because you just feel like it. So the follow-up was, Frederick, are you saying that turning bad code to good code if the business value cannot be measured and that there is no point in doing that? It just doesn't seem right just because we cannot measure the value of at the moment doing something or not doing something uh, it m might still have some implication. For example, I got a flat tire a few weeks ago and they didn't fix it because the tire was so old and could... they didn't want to fix it because the tire was so old and could be dangerous and told me that they must replace it or they... okay so they... It <laughs> They didn't want to fix it because the tire was so old and it could be dangerous, so they asked me to replace it. And I'm sure I was able to, I would have been able to continue driving on my old tire for, more, for some time more, but I preferred to avoid the risk that may or may not come if they didn't replace it. Uh, but I didn't see the value of that work at the moment. Uh, I uh, agree that it feels right to do so is not a good reason for a refactor for sure. But isn't there a point that it's when it's over and the tire is like when it's too, when it's too risky to ignore the problem? P.S. Your vids are great and make my days a little better. Oh, thank you. Uh, so this is one of those things where th this is the whole problem for me, my me personally. Uh, and the reason why I, you, if you have seen me say something like this before, I want you, I'm, I, this is just full disclosure for me. Uh, if you've seen me in the comment section say something along the lines when somebody asks me, that's a very big question, that's why I make these videos, or uh, you're not ready for the answer, or things like that. I want you to understand that it's not because I think that I have some mystical understanding of software development that somebody else doesn't. It's more the difference between a teenager asking a someone in their 50s how to invest money or like how, how do I get rich or things like that. The difference between perspective is so wide that I, like I simply cannot give you a answer in one video that is going to make sense to you because you simply have not lived long enough just as you mean me personally I haven't lived long enough to be able to relate to certain people who have been around for longer than me we're all on a journey we're all in different places and just as you have to try to adjust answers to children like when they ask you where do babies come from well it depends uh, your answer is going to depend on the kid like the who how old is the kid and th it's the same thing here. So this, the thing that you're communicating to me is, is literally the, that exact thing. You simply, you, you lack the maturity to understand at this point at the very least, to understand the answer that I gave you. So what I've been saying to you, uh, what I said in the last video, is not that you can't just make a refactor if you see that there's a danger to it because now you have a reason. It's just that you misinterpret the words that I'm using and this is the whole, like, this is why I'm say, telling you that this thing that I just described to you, I would never have to repeat that to a senior software developer, usually. The reason is because they understand what I'm trying to say. You lack that experience, you're most likely a junior developer and that's why I can't c clearly communicate to you why this is. All I can really give you is the answer that I gave you is very likely the answer that you are going to discover yourself in the future. Not maybe exactly the way that I said it, but a flavor of it. You're going to make it your own thing. You're going to reach a point where you kind of understand the difference between a good refactor and a bad refactor. Because if you already knew it, you wouldn't be asking me. And so what I'm saying is not that there is no 
I mean, as you already said yourself, like you, making a refactor just because it feels right is that's not a good thing. But just, of course, there are situations where you realize that there's too much danger going on here, or like there's too much risk, and that's where these subjective gut feelings come into play. And I like to say that there's no better, uh, more accurate measurement of software quality and time estimate and stuff like that than the gut feeling of a senior software developer that you can quote me on. Uh, the reason is very simple because it is such an organic and complicated thing that I argue that any software developer who attempts to break down, and I would go as far as to say that this is like the, this is what I call the difference between an intelligent person and a pseudo intelligent person. A pseudo intelligent person is a person who tries who, who believes that there is a way to break down complex processes that are so more such so advanced that we humans still haven't reached a point where we can break it down into a sustainable system and but they don't understand that because what they will do is that when they hit the, hit the problem which they can't solve with mathematics or they can't solve it through logic or something that feels tangible to them they will start filling in the gaps with fiction fictional things like always having you know always being able to say that the system is going to work or always be able to trust this thing that in reality they can't really trust and that is what i argue is the difference between a truly wise person and a or like a a person who has achieved wisdom and someone who is pseudo intelligent because a w wise person understands that there is a limit to how far you can stretch concrete scientific rules and that is not because there's that science has no value. It's simply because we have not reached a point where we can abstract things or make them even more concrete. Well, like we're all developing. In a hundred years, we are going to have answers to a lot of the stuff that we don't have answers today. And you have to understand at what point in the life cycle of all these things you are and understand what's going to be a sustainable solution right now and what might have to wait into the, until the future. You can't achieve perfection today in everything, unfortunately. And so that's why I say that the gut feeling is the best tool we have right now. And it's probably going to stay that way for millennia. I think it's like we were like that's it's a, it's an evergreen concept because a hum at this point we don't have anything that is more advanced than the combined experience and subconscious of a truly experienced and wise person. It doesn't matter what it is. There is nothing that we have that is more powerful. No supercomputer can do what a person like that can do. A supercomputer can do a lot of stuff but you won't be able to un understand all these abstract concepts and tie to get the tie like the work you're doing together to like all the the, the state of the in the world around you and all the people who make up that system and all the intricacies that we humans we take them for granted every single day because it's just normal for us to understand all these very abstract concepts like your intuition can you even explain where it's coming from most of us can't but it's still there and that's what I'm telling you. That's the problem that you're trying to fix right now. You're trying to ask me for a concrete rule for how to determine if you should, should, should do the refactor or you shouldn't do the refactor. And all I can give you, as I did in the last video, are some concrete guidelines. But the rest is up to you and your experience level. Because unfortunately, you're going to face problems that there is no, like, there's no textbook for it. How will I know if it's time for you to refactor or not? Because it depends on, I mean, it depends on the system. It depends on what you're doing. I mean, an example would be uh, security is my favorite one. Does security matter? I can't say yes or no there. There's no way, no one who would be able to say that. And someone who is ignorant will say, yes, of course, it always matters. And then I will just chime in and say, so if I create a hello world application with a single static web page and it's just text hello world, should I make that GDPR compliant and PSD compliant and like create like uh, uh, go really heavy on like put maybe 10% into the the product and 90% into the security? What's the impact? Like what's the cost? Uh, that that's where I come back to the cost value thing. Does it ma make sense? On the other hand, if you are making a banking system where money is being transferred and a lot of people's lives and future depend on the security of your system, it's probably a good idea to think about security, right? 
So what I want you to take away from this is that of course there is a reason to do a refactor that can't be completely measured accurately in some metric that fits the perspective of a business person. But what I'm saying isn't that that's not possible. What I'm saying is that if you want to fact check yourself a little bit, because the, the risk that you're trying to avoid, that's the thing that is bad with refactoring. Refactoring can happen for many reasons. Sometimes it's very warranted to do a refactor because there is a lot of risk or there is a measurable thing. It's just it's a way for you to determine if you're being honest with yourself or if you're letting your emotions run wild. And the reason why I gave you that answer was because you really, you actually asked me, me that exact thing. I don't have to worry so much about if I'm doing a good or a bad refactor because on an average day I know that most of the time I'm being honest with myself and sometimes I'm not and that's one of those good reasons to have really really experienced awesome co-workers who can fact check you and that's why I always tell people if you're ever ever doing anything like a refactor or something that's going to change the workflow for anybody be humble enough to understand that you are a human being and you are limited in so many ways and before you do anything just ask for a second opinion does this make sense to you and then you'll know if you're on the if you're moving in the right direction uh, or if you're just kind of doing uh, something for yourself and that's a very healthy thing to do before you do any refactor but at the same time you can't think about a refactor as this well if you, i can prove that metric a is going to uh, increase by component like by amount of b then it's not worth doing because it's a much more abstract thing than that how do you quantify developer happiness that's not something that's going to be super easy for you to sell to a stakeholder but it's a damn important factor have a great day